Good morning. Welcome to Morning Special. 여러분 안녕하세요. 12월 2일 월요일 최수진의 Morning Special입니다. 2019 올해 극장 관객이 사상 최다를 기록할 것으로 전망됩니다. 영화 진흥위원회 집계에 따르면 올 들어 11월 30일까지 총 관객은 2억 400여만 명으로 집계됐다고 하는데요. 이는 작년 같은 기간에 비해서 5% 늘어난 수치인데 올해 2억 명 돌파 시점도요 작년보다 2주가량 빠릅니다. 통상 12월 한달 동안 2천만 명 이상이 몰리는 점을 고려하면은요. 연말까지 총 관객은 2억 2천만 명을 넘어설 것으로 보입니다. 1번 box office, 2번 bag office, 3번 pocket office. 오늘도 청취자 여러분의 많은 참여 기다리고 있습니다. 여러분의 퀴즈 정답 보내주신 분들 중에 추첨을 통해서 총 다섯 분께 뉴욕타임즈 1개월 구독권 보내드리겠습니다. 또 여러분의 소식과 소감 그리고 방송 중 궁금한 질문 있으시면 보내주세요. 짧은 문자 50원 긴 문자 100원에 샵 1045고요. 반디 게시판이나 카카오톡 플러스 이용도 가능합니다. Okay then, let's kick off today's show with today's global headlines. 세계 각국 언론사들의 어떤 헤드라인이 올라왔는지 살펴보는 시간입니다. Touch Global Headlines. A terror attack has taken place on London Bridge in the British capital, resulting in two people dead and three injured. 영국 런던의 런던 브리지에서 대낮에 흉기 테러가 벌어져. 시민 두 명이 숨지고 세 명이 다쳤습니다. Pro democracy activists have clashed with police forces in Hong Kong a week after scoring a major victory in local elections. 홍콩 구의원 선거에서 범민주 진영이 승리한 뒤 처음 벌어진 주말 시위에서 경찰과 시위대가 또 다시 충돌했습니다. China's state media, the People's Daily, has criticized the United States on its so-called false democracy and human rights. 중국 공산당 기관지 인민일보가 미국식 인권과 민주주의는 모두 허위라고 맹비난하고 나섰습니다. Young people worldwide held thousands of demonstrations last Friday to draw attention to climate change ahead of a UN climate conference. UN 기후변화 해박 당사국 총회를 앞두고 지난 금요일 전 세계에서 기후변화 문제 해결을 촉구하는 시위가 동시다발적으로 벌어졌습니다. Seoul has kicked off a fine dust tackling measure which bans drivers of vehicles that are categorized as grade 5 in terms of emission from the areas within the Seoul city wall. 서울 사대문 안에서 배출가스 5등급 차량의 운행을 제한하는 미세먼지 계절 관리제가 시행에 들어갔습니다. And for the headlines and more on this first Monday of the month is Steve. Good morning. Good morning to you. First Monday of the month, but we should say first Monday of the last month of 2019. True. We are the 29th to do the math into 30 days away from 2020. <gasps> It's unbelievable. I know, <laughs> right? It's wow. hard to believe. Are you excited about it? Yeah, I am. Are you looking forward to it? Yeah, yeah. You usually feel this way at the end of the year? 
I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I feel like uh, we're about to enter a new year, a mm. new chapter of something, mm -hmm. and yeah, I get quite excited. Yeah. So you're one of those people that instead of maybe looking back at mm. the year gone by, yeah. you start planning ahead for the year to come. You yeah, focus more on that. Yeah, because looking back, I'll probably get into a lot of uh, depressing moments thinking, oh, why didn't I do that? Why did I do this? And mm. I don't want to get myself there. So I'll just look ahead and go, oh, you know, let's look forward to the next year. We are also, if you celebrate the holiday mm -hmm. 23 days away from christmas time oh that's right and i put up my tree <gasps> over the weekend paul do we have the picture do you think we can put that up is there? it a big tree it's a six foot tree a six foot tree oh my it, it's goodness not, it's not a real tree okay uh, but i bought it a few years ago because i was missing home you know all of the decorations and i know that in seoul there are many places that you can go where mm. you can find pretty lights and things like that yeah that's true but in my home mm -hmm. years ago in seoul i never decorated my house and oh. then finally i decided no not good enough yeah so i went out and i found one for sale mm -hmm. and uh, i bought all of the necessary decorations oh. and now the tree is uh is up yeah i can't wait to see the picture um but yeah i mean six foot normally in korea people don't get real trees mm -hmm. although i think that's more common in canada and north america right yeah i think so yeah in nova scotia when i was a kid we would go out as a family and mm. you go to the kind of Christmas tree forest yeah. kind of thing. And then you have the, the man who owns the land mm. or, or the woman who owns the land. And then they show you around and right. you pick out your tree and then you chop down your tree or they will do it for you. Oh, and if you don't so do nice. that, then you can go to a Christmas tree lot, which is a like a parking lot, yeah. a Christmas wow. tree lot. And then you they're all wrapped up and you mm. pick out your tree and you throw it on top of your car and wow. off you go home. Yeah, mm -hmm. Six feet in meters, what would that be? 1.82? Something like that. Yeah. yeah, that's about your height, isn't it? It's 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 exactly. Oh, my is it height, exactly? Yeah. It's actually, even a little, <laughs> a little taller than I am. Wow. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll get to that picture later. I think. Sure. Okay. Well, if you'd like to listen to the headlines again, you can do so by visiting our website. 조금 전에 들으신 headline in your morning special homepage. Headline 다시 듣기에서 무료로 들으실 수 있습니다. 많은 이용 바랍니다. Let's go over the headlines. Headline number one this morning. A terror attack has taken place on London Bridge in the British capital, resulting in two people dead and three injured. 영국 런던의 런던 브리지에서 대낮에 흉기 테러가 벌어져 시민 두 명이 숨지고 세 명이 다쳤습니다. So this was done by 28-year-old Usman Khan, and the attack began at a, just before 2 p.m. inside Fishmongers Hall and continued on to London Bridge. Are you familiar with the geography in London of Fishmongers? Vaguely, but it's been a while since I went there. Yeah, so it was at a conference, and it was understood that people at the conference tried to stop him giving mm. chase onto the bridge. Uh, there are a couple of videos that you can watch. In one, two men can be seen holding uh, Usman Khan back while using a whale tusk uh, seized from uh, the uh, uh, a thing that was on the wall inside the hall, and also a fire extinguisher spraying nearby, but before others stepped in to pin him down, and then in in a second video, a man is seen walking away holding a large knife that they had retrieved. Mm -hmm. uh, British Transport Police said that later he was uh, a plane's clothes officer. Very, very brave of the pe people of London to actually go up to this man and try to stop him. But apparently they were able to spot this guy because he was wearing what looked like a suicide vest. Yeah, that's right. So the people uh, that were holding Khan down, they were moved away by police after they thought he was wearing a suicide vest. Mm -hmm. under his jacket and he was then shot uh, by an officer and the Met, the police uh, assistant commissioner, said that the explosive vest, it turned out to be fake, but it was very convincing. This man had actually plotted a terrorist attack in the past, right? Yeah, that's right. There was a, an attack planned. He was convicted, as a matter of fact, mm. back in 2012 after plotting with a group of people that uh, where they were discussing an attack on the London Stock Exchange 
Association, also pubs in an area called Stoke. Uh, and they also discussed setting up a jihadist training camp in Pakistan. He was released in 2018, in December of so two, a year ago. 2018, mm. on parole. And one of the conditions of his release, there were many, was that he should have been wearing an electronic tag. But this is a very controversial issue in England now because uh, Boris Johnson is saying that he should never have been let out in the first place. He mm. should have been in jail still. He was blaming the opposition party. The opposition party was blaming Boris Johnson's party. Oh. Now critics are saying the two parties should stop making that this is a tragedy yeah. and they should stop trying to make this uh, political volleyball type thing. Ah, 그렇군요. 과거의 테러 어, 테러를 이제 모의했다는 혐의로 징역에 살다가 작년 한 1년 전쯤에 가석방으로 풀려난 어, 우스만 칸이라고 하는 28세의 남성이 이번에 테러를 어, 벌이면서 두 명이 숨졌고요. 세 명이 다쳤는데 이것을 가지고 이제 정치적인 싸움까지 이어진다고 하니까 굉장히 안타깝습니다. Hopefully as you said they will focus on the actual incident that has taken place. That's right. Let's go on to our second headline. Pro-democracy activists have clashed with police forces in Hong Kong a week after scoring a major victory in local elections. 홍콩 구의원 선거에서 범민주 진영이 승리한 뒤 처음 벌어진 주말 시위에서 경찰과 시위대가 또다시 충돌했습니다. So clouds of tear gas once again returned to Hong Kong over the weekend. Police and protesters clashed, signaling pro-democracy rallies are set to drag on and continue after demonstrators. They got their boost, didn't they, from an election win and also from support from the U.S. Congress. Uh, and those election wins were viewed as a broad endorsement of the movement's goals. Anyway, the demonstrations on Sunday, they were all granted letters of no objection. So they were allowed uh, to be doing this, unlike the many recent protests that had been banned by the police. And thousands of protesters were out in the harbor front district, district of, help me out with my pronunciation here, Sim Sha Sui. Sim Sha Trey. Uh -huh, yep. Thank you. And they were chanting slogans such as five demands, not one less, and Hong Kongers take revenge. And I read another quote in another article from one of of the protesters saying, yes, okay, what we wanted in terms of elections, we've mm. done well there in terms of results, but let's not forget what our goals were. In the days leading up to the district elections, the protests and the violence seemed to be dying down. Yeah, there was a break, uh, a, a period of no violence, wasn't yeah. there? Yeah. And yet, over the weekend, we were seeing tear gas again, people wearing masks and climbing over fences. Mm -hmm. Are things getting violent again, I'm wondering? Well, the protests, they had their kind of rules set in, in place, mm. right, for the protesters. Um, some of the protesters were not following those rules, and police were firing, firing tear, tear gas, excuse me, saying, mm. get back in your place. Mm, 그렇군요. 어제 이제 최루탄이 또다시 등장하기는 했었지만, 전체적으로는 좀 평화롭게 진행됐다라는 평가가 외신을 통해서 나오고 있습니다. 이제 앞으로도 평화롭게 진행이 될지 아니면은 또 격화할지는 지켜봐야 되겠는데요. What was interesting was that in one part of Hong Kong, I watched some videos of people singing the American national anthem, mm -hmm. wearing Trump masks, and thanking the U.S. government for yeah. signing this humanitarian bill. It was a separate event, but protesters mm. were waving American flags and they marched to the U.S. consulate to thank Washington for passing that Hong Kong Human Rights and Democracy Act. Another interesting um, difference with these protests, or at least something that I hadn't heard about, out before. Mm. Hundreds of parents brought their children out to the march on Sunday morning and uh, they were thinking that this was against what many, con many considered the indiscriminate use of tear gas by the police and children were actually uh, writing handwritten messages and sticking their drawings and their messages for the police outside the government headquarters. For example, a note said, please don't fire tear gas anymore. Uh, because besides making other people sick, tear gas will also make you sick and hurt animals. One primary school student wrote that on a note. Hmm, 그렇군요. 홍콩에서 계속해서 이렇게 어, 민주화를 요구하는 시위가 이루어지고 있는 가운데 미국에서는 홍콩 인권 법안이 서명이 됐습니다. 트럼프 대통령이 서명을 했기 때문에 그것을 또 감사하는 의미에서 집회가 열리기도 했는데요. That actually takes us to the other side of the whole story, China's perspective. That is our next headline. At Line number three this morning, China's state media, the People's Daily, has criticized the United States on its so-called false democracy and human rights. 
중국 공산당 기관지 인민일보가 미국식 인권과 민주주의는 모두 허위라고 맹비난하고 나섰습니다. And you're right. Amid the growing conflict between the United States and China over the enactment of the U.S. Human Rights Act in Hong Kong, 음. the People's Daily, which is a Chinese Communist Party newspaper, blasted uh, the U.S.-style human rights and democracy as false. They criticized America for its double standards. This was done in a front-page commentary that was titled "U.S." Human rights and democracy, and this came out on Sunday. And it almost seemed like a bit of a threat. Some of the things that were written in the article, China saying that if Washington does not back down, then it will have to face consequences. I'll read to you some of the things that were written in the story. Okay. Uh, the U.S. created the Hong Kong Human Rights Act, which openly interfered with Chinese internal affairs, with domestic laws, and violated international law. This shows the double standards and false logic of the U.S. Pouring water into its bottomless venom, the Chinese government and people firmly opposed this and criticized the power of justice around the world with one voice. 네, 지금 읽어주신 그 인민일보 기사 영어로 번역된 걸 읽어주셨는데요. 저는 이제 우리말로 번역된 것을 또 간략하게 읽어드리면 미국이 홍콩 인권법을 만들었는데 이건 공경연하게 국내법으로 중국 내정을 포악하게 간섭하고 국제법을 위반하는 행위다 이렇게 썼고요. 그 다음에 이어서는 미국의 밑빠진 독에 물 붓기 식의 이중 잣대와 허기, 허위로 가득 찬 패권 논리를 보여준다라고 또 얘기를 했습니다. Uh, yeah, China obviously not happy, but Washington cannot just ignore China's perspective because the trade war that's going on could really hurt Washington. Yeah, that's right, and that's why there was speculation whether Trump would sign mm. that or not, but he ended up doing that, as mm. we learned last week. Uh, the article, too, was criticizing the United States on its double standards, basically saying that the U.S. claims human rights and violations of human rights, but in the United States... Those same things are more serious, including racial discrimination, sex discrimination, and gun violence. Mm, that's probably a whole new news story right yeah, there. That's right. Let's go on to our next headline. Headline number four this morning. Young people worldwide held thousands of demonstrations last Friday to draw attention to climate change ahead of a UN climate conference. UN 기후변화협약 당사국 총회를 앞두고 지난 금요일 전 세계에서 기후변화 문제 해결을 촉구하는 시위가 동시다발적으로 벌어졌습니다. So in Chicago demonstrators with the Sunrise Movement Chicago, the Illinois Youth Climate Strike and other organizations plan to occupy Water Tower Place, which is a major downtown shopping mall. Here's a quote from Lily Schneier. She's 23 years old. She is the coordinator of the event. She said, "We will be disrupting business as usual to make sure shoppers cannot ignore the climate emergency." Of course, Last Friday was Black Friday, oh, yes, the, the biggest right. shopping yeah. day of the year. Uh, the quote continues, Water uh, Tower Place is an ideal setting for us to draw attention to the culpability of large corporations and fast fashion who have put profits for a greedy few ahead of the needs of many. Mm. Well, these Friday protests have been called the Fridays for Future. Mm -hmm. It's been over a year now since they've been held. And this time around, <coughs> excuse me there, uh, 158 countries, 2,000 400 or so cities took part. Yeah, that's right. And in the United States, not just uh, Chicago, Washington, D.C., they held a, quote, Black Friday Funeral for Future. Oh. That was the name of their event there. That was outside of the Capitol building mm -hmm. uh, in New York City. Demonstrators with Extinction Rebellion, we learned about mm. that group on the show as well. They walked slowly and silently through a store pushing empty shopping carts in a long chain. Uh, and they called it Buy Nothing Day. Mm, interesting. Of course, the COP25 uh, convention will be held from today, or at least uh, local time, the 2nd of December in Spain. Mm -hmm. A lot of environmentalists will be there, including uh, Greta Thunberg, yeah. who started the Friday uh, strike. This all kicked off with the 16-year-old Swedish environmentalist. That's right. Did she make, she, is she there now? I have yet to look at the updates. I know she's on her way. Uh, whether she has arrived or not, I will have to keep an eye on. Because she was in the United States and then the venue got changed 
all the way over to Europe yeah. and she needed someone to help her get there, right? Exactly, yeah. yeah. Well, she did find someone, mm. that's what I know, and she is on her way. So I would imagine she's either already there or will be there soon because the convention will be held from the 2nd until the 13th of December. Uh, I'm sure we'll be covering that in the news. Indeed. 그렇습니다. 금요일 시위에 어, 이번에는 이제 158개국, 2,400여 도시가 동시에 참여를 했고요. 그레타 툰베리도 이번에 이 COP25라고 하는 um, convention에 참여를 한다고 하죠. Let's go on to our final he headline. Headline number five this morning. Seoul has kicked off a fine dust tackling measure which bans drivers of vehicles that are categorized as grade five in terms of emission from the areas within the Seoul city wall. 서울 사대문 안에서 배출가스 5등급 차량의 운행을 제한하는 미세먼지 계절 관리제가 시행에 들어갔습니다. So, owners of vehicles that are categorized as grade 5 in terms of emission will be receiving a big fine, 250,000 won, mm. if they drive in the city's so-called uh, green transport zones. Those zones cover areas within the Seoul city wall and that is according to the Seoul metropolitan government. 네, 서울 사대문 안을 이제 녹색 교통 지역이라고 이름을 지어서요. 여기에 배출가스 5등급 노차가 지나게 될 경우에는 벌금 25만 원이 실시간으로 부과가 됩니다. 이 카메라가 이제 하이테크 카메라를 쓰는데 한 10초만이면은 바로 감지를 하고 그 다음에 25만 원의 그 과태료 부과됐다는 문자까지 간다고 하거든요. So yesterday was the first day mm -hmm. that this was held. Can you tell us how many vehicles were fined? 2,572 grade 5 vehicles were detected in mm -hmm. the green zone, but among them, mm. 416 vehicles were fined. 104 million won. In fines just yesterday alone. <웃음> 그렇군요. 운행 제한 이제 첫날인 어제에 5등급 차량이 416대 적발됐습니다. 그래서 부과된 과태료만 1억 원이 넘는다고 해요. It's a lot of cars that should not be there. And how, how do you know if you're one of those cars? Well, you'll know if you get caught. <laughs> that is true. That's for sure. But I think you can also go on the internet too, yes, right? Yes, that's what I heard as well. Yeah. Indeed. Anyway, the effect is uh, in place from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. daily, and there are 119 surveillance cameras installed in 45 different places. Uh, there are exceptions, though, so we, sh we should talk about that briefly. Uh, grade 5 cars owned by drivers with disabilities or emergency vehicles or those equipped with diesel particulate filters, those will be exempt from the scheduled restrictions. Restrictions. Mm, let's be environmentally friendly, everyone. Yeah, and speaking of environmentally friendly, this is all part of a city project that is uh, intended to cut fine dust in the area by up to 15.6%. 네, 그렇습니다. 미세먼지가 한 15% 정도 저감될 것으로 기대된다고 합니다. Those were our headlines this morning. Let's remind our listeners now of the quiz. When you go see a movie, what was the last movie you saw in the theater? Frozen 2. Oh, I didn't watch it yet. I heard it's really good. It's good, yeah. I still haven't seen the first Frozen, mm. so I feel like I should watch that. But I heard there's a very cute point in the movie where the little snowman guy, yeah. he gives a recap of everything oh, that yeah. happened in the first <laughs> film. So maybe I don't need to. Anyway, back to the quiz question. When you go see a movie, you buy a ticket at the blank office. Fill in the blank. Is it number one, box office, number two, bag office, or number three, pocket office? 짧은 문자 50원, 긴 문자 100원에 샵 1045로 보내주시고요. 한디 게시판이나 카카오톡 플러스 이용도 가능합니다. 추첨을 통해서 총 다섯 분께 뉴욕타임즈 1개월 구독권 보내드리겠습니다. Did you like it, by the way? I loved it. Uh, people say it's great. It's I got, good, I yeah. Gotta, I gotta see it. It was a bit of a... Thriller suspense type cartoon, which is I, very hard to imagine. I heard that it's a little more adult like yeah. than the first one, a little darker. Well, there's a mystery to be solved. Oh, really? That's what makes it more fun, I think, for adults. Uh -huh. Anyhow, let's listen to a song. This is American Authors' Best Day of My Life.
It's the first Monday of December 2019 and Yay! Kim Aryam Nim <laughs> says 드디어 12월의 첫 월요일이군요. 지난 주말에 처음으로 IELTS라는 시험을 봤어요. 그동안 모닝 스페셜로 많은 도움이 되었다는 걸 느꼈죠. 앞으로도 함께 해요. 따뜻한 12월 보내요, 선생님들. 사랑합니다. 하셨어요. Have you ever taken any of the English comprehension exams? TOEIC, IELTS, TOEFL. <laughs> many 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 years ago. Yeah. One of my students asked me, Steve, mm. what's your TOEIC score? <laughs> really? And I chuckled and I said, I don't, I don't know. You've I, never taken I've never taken the, the TOEIC exact. test, but okay. I bet, I said uh. to my student, I bet your score would be higher than mine. <laughs> 쉽지 않아요. 저는 웬만한 시험 다 봐봤거든요. I've taken the IELTS, I've taken the TOEIC and the TOEFL. I've taken most of these exams for many different reasons. Mm. Uh, one of those would be because I sometimes I need them and sometimes just to know, you know, what the tests are like. So that I can teach people. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. yeah, right. Those tests are really hard, right? They are, yeah. But they're designed to be hard. And this yeah. is this is what I learned about those types of tests, is that the way they design them mm -hmm. is so that there is no um, benefit to one person over another. For example, you probably, I could be wrong, but mm. you probably won't see a question about sports and sports terminology in, right. Because if you like sports mm. and I don't, you you are probably going to be familiar with those vocabulary, sure, right? Sure, absolutely. So they try to make neutral questions in those tests so it doesn't mm. give anyone an advantage. Exactly. Mm. What's interesting about the IELTS is they have the speaking part is where you literally have to speak. That you have an interview mm -hmm. with the interviewee for about ten minutes, five to ten minutes, I think. Yep. And when I took this, um, you know, the interviewer was like. So why why are you taking this exam? You know, um, but what's interesting is one of our guests, uh, Barry. Do you know Barry? Barry Walsh. Barry Walsh. Yeah, yeah. Barry said, was on the show a long time ago when yeah. I was here. Yeah. He said he had to take this exam for some reason or another. Uh -huh. It was part of you know the work he was doing, and so he went in. And the interviewer he usually says, "So please introduce yourself." And yeah. then the interview starts. And Barry's you know he's British, yeah. so and so the interviewer goes. So why are you here? You know, why are you taking this like, exam? Like literally, yeah, why are you here? I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and that was a funny story, but uh, anyhow, ah, uh, 시험 네 얘기하다 보니까 많은 얘기가 나왔네요. 어, 많이 긴장하셨을 텐데 네, 도움을 받으셨다니 참 다행입니다. 어, 8583님이요. 정말 출근하기 싫지만 2019년 마지막 달이기에 오늘부터 출근할 수 있어서 감사하다라고 생각하기로 했습니다. 얼른 크리스마스 왔으면 좋겠어요. This person doesn't want to go to work, but thinking it's the last month of the year, you know, they're going to try and, and, and have that optimistic spirit. Yeah, and get out and go for a walk. I mean, even if you're not doing any shopping, mm. I think walking around the department stores and, you know, Myeongdong in the yeah, end, listening nice. to the Christmas music, it'll just put you in that nice mood, right? Mm, 그렇습니다. And getting a lot of sunlight is, of course, beneficial for your health as well. And, you know, we always <clears throat> need that bit of sunlight to keep us optimistic, especially in the winter. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, as we mentioned on Friday, get out there, get some sunlight. Yeah, exactly. 골피부님이요. 안녕하세요, 수진쌤, 스티브쌤. 오늘은 미세먼지가 양호하네요. 미세먼지가 나쁘면 그날 하루 기분도 나쁨으로 시작되는 기분이더라고요. 두분 모두 감기 조심하세요 하셨습니다. The clear air makes a big difference. Huge. In how you feel as well. Not just, you know, the air you're breathing in, but just the overall temperament. Oh, and just looking up and seeing a blue sky, yeah. even if there's some nice white fluffy clouds overhead, that's okay. Mm. Yeah, it'd be nice if we had more of those days. Absolutely. Wouldn't it? Mm. 맞아요. 꿀피부님, 정말 공감이 되는 얘기입니다. Keep sending in then your answers, questions, suggestions, greetings, and whatever it is else you might want to say. We have five New York Times one month subscriptions to give out in the first hour. 자, 그러면 news focus 살펴보도록 하겠습니다. 오는 2022년까지 모든 원자력 발전소의 문을 닫기로 한 독일이 방사성 폐기물을 어디에 연구 보관할지를 고심 중입니다. 미국 CNN 방송은 2만 8천 어, 세제곱미터가 넘는 치명적인 고준위 방사성 폐기물을 앞으로 100만 년 동안 안전하게 묻을 장소를 찾는 것이 현재 독일이 직면한 난제라고 보도했는데요. Let's listen to the story. 
Where do you safely bury more than 28,000 cubic meters of deadly radioactive waste for the next million years? This is a pressing issue facing Germany as it closes all of its nuclear power plants in the coming years and experts are now hunting for somewhere to bury almost 2,000 containers of high-level radioactive waste. The site must be beyond rock solid with no groundwater or earthquakes that could cause a leakage. Currently, high-level radioactive waste is stored in temporary facilities, but these facilities were only designed to hold the waste for a few decades. 네, 독일에서 이제 핵 폐기물을 어디다가 연구 보관할 것인가 이 고민거리를 가지고 있어요. 현재 있는 보관 시설들은 몇십 년까지만 보관을 할수 있다고 하는데 앞으로 몇백 년만이 아니라 백만 년을 내다보고 있기 때문에 어, 이제 조금 더 정말 연구적인 그런 시설이 필요하겠죠. Right now, as you said in the article, um, the uh, we we can only store these radioactive waste uh, for a few decades. Yeah, in these current facilities, right, because they were temporary and they were designed to be temporary. Mm. So now, like we said, they are hunting for a burial ground, but yeah. it's really ultra important where you bury these things because mm. there cannot be any chance of right. leakage whatsoever, obviously. The reason right? for that is, uh, I, I read the article, that it's very, very hot, so hot, and the, the pressure and everything is so deadly that if you open it, then when it's at its hottest, or even if it's um, sort of cooling down, still, you can die instantly mm -hmm. if it's, you know, really bad. So it needs a lot of time to cool down and deteriorate. And in this case, we're looking at maybe a million years, yeah. we don't know. Therefore, it's crucial that they bury this in a site where no one is ever going to open it. But the problem is, I think for the people who are living in this day and age, you can just say, please don't open it because you might die. Mm -hmm. But it's the people in a million years' time. Mm. How do we tell them not to open it? And how, how are they not going to be like us, looking for Egyptian burials and, you know, burying things up? Yeah, exactly. So where in the world do you put this then? Because, <sighs> because which country? Yeah. Is it going to be Canada? Probably mm, not. Is it mm. going to be the United States? Probably not. Germany needs to find somebody to yeah. take this. It needs to so be true. done in a location where, mm. and probably, you know, around where at least people, and if not people, then wildlife, nature mm -hmm. already exists. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why we call this a pressing issue for mm -hmm. Germany. A yep. pressing issue is urgent. Mm -hmm. You have to deal with this right now. An easy example would be a terrible toothache. Uh. People often put off. Put <laughs> off means delay. Mm. People often put off going to the dentist. Oh, I'll go tomorrow or I'll go next week. But sometimes it's, press, it's, mm. it's a pressing issue. Your tooth hurts so bad. So I ask you, where are you going today? I got to go to the dentist. Mm. This tooth is a pressing issue. 그래요. 굉장히 긴급한 문제일 때 pressing이라는 표현을 쓸수 있습니다. It means urgent. I guess you could say it's crucial mm -hmm. in a way as well. You have to deal with it yeah. right now. There you go. Yeah. Uh, and when they're looking for this new site, it has to be beyond rock solid. That's what it says in the article. And mm. rock solid is our second expression here. If something is rock solid, it means it has no weaknesses. And you can talk about the physical makeup of mm. something. This table, rock solid. As solid as a rock, mm -hmm. right? Physically. Yeah. But you can talk about this figuratively as well. Mm -hmm. For example, performances. Uh, if you enjoyed Joker, then you could say Joaquin Phoenix's performance was mm -hmm. rock solid. Ah, there were no weaknesses yeah. in it. Mm -hmm. But in the context of the article, when we're talking about a burial site, it needs to be physically rock solid, no leakage, no nothing. 그렇습니다. 바위처럼 단단하다라는 의미의 rock solid가 여기서 쓰였는데요. 이 보관 시설은 rock solid보다 더 단단해야 된다라고 기사가 표현을 하고 있습니다. 근데 사람의 어떤 그 연기라든지 어떤 행동이 정말 단단한 우리가 뭐 연기력, 탄탄한 연기력이라고 하죠. 우리말로는 그때도 영어로는 solid, rock solid performance라고 할수 있습니다. All right, let's listen to this story one more time. 
Where do you safely bury more than 28,000 cubic meters of deadly radioactive waste for the next million years? This is a pressing issue facing Germany as it closes all of its nuclear power plants in the coming years, and experts are now hunting for somewhere to bury almost 2,000 containers of high-level radioactive waste. The site must be beyond rock solid, with no groundwater or earthquakes that could cause a leakage. Currently, high-level radioactive waste is stored in temporary facilities, but these facilities were only designed to hold the waste for a few decades. 자, 두 번째 뉴스 포커스입니다. 추수감사절과 블랙 프라이데이를 시작으로 본격화한 미국의 연말 쇼핑 시즌을 맞아 소비자들의 폭풍 쇼핑이 이어졌습니다. 특히 온라인 쇼핑이 더욱 위세를 떨쳤는데요. 보도에 따르면 전날 블랙 프라이데이 하루 동안 미국 내 온라인 쇼핑은요. 74억 달러, 약 8조 7천억 원을 기록했다고 합니다. Let's listen to the story. Following swiftly on the heels of a Thanksgiving that broke records with $4.2 billion in online sales, Black Friday also hit a new high. Consumers spent $7.4 billion online, up by $1.2 billion on Black Friday 2018, but fell short of the prediction for the day, which was $7.5 billion. A full $2.9 billion of Black Friday sales happened on smartphones, as the market may soon be at a point where smartphones out way web-based purchases through computers. 네, Black Friday of course is a huge shopping day in America. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest if not the biggest retail mm. day of the year. That's right. I thought this was ki uh, kind of interesting though is that we're seeing a change in trends where people are doing their shopping from their tablet PCs yeah. or from their smartphones instead of from their desktop computer in their home or in their office. Yes. Have you done any Black Friday shopping yourself? I'm not much of an online shopper to be honest. Okay. Maybe this time time of year would be the only time that I did it. I did order a lot of things from America last year mm. from the um, the jungle website, yes. that one. Yep. Uh, but I haven't done it yet this year. Mm. Have you actually physically been in America on Black Friday? I have not. All right. Did you see any videos from this past weekend, though? No. I mean, it's always terrifying to watch those videos. It's madness. Mm. It's absolute madness. It's a free for all. Yeah. Every yeah. man for himself. Oh, there's a good one. Free for <laughs> all. Every man About for himself. About three years ago, I was in America and it was Black Friday. And so I visited one of the stores and it was as if the store had been bombed by something. Yep. <laughs> everything was just scattered on the floor. Nothing was on the shelf. And but it wasn't as chaotic as it sounds. I mean, all the products were on the floor and scattered everywhere. But the people lining up, they were all very calm. Well, and just waiting for hours, but very calm. I think it depends on where you are, because <laughs> I watched a video from over the weekend, and it was the ca it was the security camera that was looking at the flat screen TV yeah. section. You would think that these were the last flat screen TVs on planet <laughs> Earth, because that's people, what it feels like. People were reaching over and grabbing and throwing elbows yeah. and it's almost violent it's not violent mm. but it has a violent feel to it when you watch those videos 맞아요 미국에선 정말 블랙 프라이데이 때는 상상할 수 없는 할인을 많이 하더라고요 뭐 80% 세일 90% 세일을 하니까 가전제품 같은 경우 그날 사는 게 당연히 뭐 말이 되겠죠 but anyhow going back to the script yes uh, so uh, this happened Black mm. Friday on the heels of a Thanksgiving that also broke a sales record so on the heels of is the expression to learn here. And the simple meaning is after. So on the heels of Christmas. Now remember, on the heels of means after. Mm. So after Christmas, what do we have? New Year's. Exactly. So on the heels of Christmas comes New Year's. Mm. Very simple, right? Right. On the heels of Thanksgiving comes Black Friday. Mm, 그렇군요. 바로 다음에 라는 뜻의 on the heels of입니다. 히읗은 뒤꿈치인데요. 바로 후에 
라는 뜻입니다. I'm going to give you a sentence example. I'll give you a little test here. Okay? okay. I want you to change the, I want to, I want you to change Yeah, it's like your toe test again. So, why are you taking this test? Uh, I'm going to give you a sentence. Change it into the expression on the heels of. All right. Okay? The coach got fired after the team's loss. Mhm. Mm the coach got fired on the heels of the team's loss. Right, exactly. So mm. you just take out after and you put I in on right. the heels of <laughs> bonus points for <laughs> Sue Sun Sen. Yeah. 네, 그렇습니다. All right, we'll just uh, look at that expression there and listen to the story one more time. Following swiftly on the heels of a Thanksgiving that broke records with $4.2 billion in online sales, Black Friday also hit a new high. Consumers spent $7.4 billion online, up by $1.2 billion on Black Friday 2018, but fell short of the prediction for the day, which was $7.5 billion. A full $2.9 billion of Black Friday sales happened on smartphones, as the market may soon be at a point where smartphones outweigh web-based purchases. Through computers. In England and Australia, you know what's really on the on the heels of Christmas is Boxing Day. Oh yeah, right. And that's sort of like Black Friday there. So the shopping spree happens on the 26th of December. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. in Canada too, we have. Oh really? That. Yeah. All right. Let's remind our listeners of the quiz. When you go see a movie, you buy a ticket at the blank office. Is it number one box, number two bag, number three pocket? All right. If you know the answer, send it into us. We have New York Times subscriptions to give out. 노래 듣고 와서요. 다음 뉴스 포커스 보도록 하겠습니다. This is the Bee Gees. You win again. 자, 다음 뉴스 포커스 살펴볼게요. 전 세계 라면 소비의 약 40%를 차지하는 중국이 최근 몇 년간 라면 수입을 계속 늘리는 가운데 한국이 최대 수혜 국가로 떠올랐다는 분석이 나왔습니다. Let's listen to the story. China's imports of Korean instant noodles jumped five-fold last year compared to 2014. According to the Korea Trade Investment Promotion Agency, China imported $100 million or 118 billion won worth of Korean instant noodles last year, up from 15.1 million in 2014. Among all instant noodles imported by China, 50% came from Korea, 40.2 billion packs in the January to September period. About 280 million packs of instant noodles are downed daily on average in China. However, Korea came out on top in per capita annual consumption of instant noodles with 74.6, beating Vietnam with 53.9 and Nepal with 53. Wow, I guess that makes Korea the ramyeon champion, king champion. Wow. of the world. <laughs> That's a lot of ramyeon for China to be importing from one country. It's true. How often do you eat ramyeon? Not often. Same here. But here's what I do when I do eat ramyeon. I uh, boil the noodles yes. as you normally do, but then I take the I, I drain the noodles oh. and then I fry them with some sesame oil. Wow. And then the spice. Then I add the, the powdered spice mm. and then maybe some extra mushrooms. And... Yeah. You fry the noodles. Yeah. Oh, it's really pretty good, but I don't, I don't eat it that often, actually. Mm. Yeah. I don't know why. I mean, I really enjoy it, but I just don't crave it that yeah. often. Maybe it's because you didn't have it as a child. Perhaps. I didn't either. That's mm -hmm. why I don't have those cravings. Yeah, right. Those are big, big numbers we're talking about here, though, Absolutely, right? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So, about 280 million packs of instant noodles are downed daily on average in China. So, down, to down something. Mm. Okay, I have a bottle of water here. Yep. If I open it up and I drink the whole thing, <laughs> right? One and shot, one way. shot. Yeah, right. <laughs> like that. But yeah, exactly. That's mm. an example of downing something. Mm. And I guess it's kind of literal because I'm pouring the water down my throat, right? That's it. Yeah. So to down means to eat or drink, and it implies that it's done very quickly, and it also implies it's the whole thing. 맞아요. Down을 동사로 쓰게 되면은 뭔가를 down하다라고 하면 굉장히 급하게 먹다 아니면 마시다라는 뜻인데요. 보통 우리가 말하는 one shot 이렇게 한 번에 딱 꿀꺽꿀꺽꿀꺽 마시는 거. Here is a common uh, place where you will hear this expression. Uh -huh. You and I are at a coffee shop, okay. right? And I say, okay, come on, let's go. Mm. And you say, oh, I still have a little coffee left. Mm. I'll say, just down it. Mm. 
커피 아직 좀 남았는데 그냥 한 번에 마셔버려. Down it. Down it. Right. 아, 너무 좋은 표현이네요. Just down it. 음, yeah. 그렇습니다. 동사로서의 down 이런 뜻이 있고요. And Korea came out on top when it comes to ramen. I don't know if this is good or bad. <laughs> It's nice to be a champion. But is it good to be a champion at eating something unhealthy? Sure, why not, right? Yeah. Korea came out on top mm. in per capita annual consumption of instant noodles. And when you come out on top, it means that you are the winner, you are the champion, you are number one. 네, 이기다 라는 뜻이에요. Come yep. out on top. Okay, let's listen to this story one more time. China's imports of Korean instant noodles jumped five-fold last year compared to 2014. According to the Korea Trade Investment Promotion Agency, China imported $100 million or 108 15 billion won worth of Korean instant noodles last year, up from 15.1 million in 2014. Among all instant noodles imported by China, 50% came from Korea, 40.2 billion packs in the January to September period. About 280 million packs of instant noodles are downed daily on China, on average in China. However, Korea came out on top in per capita annual consumption of instant noodles with 74.6, beating Vietnam. Vietnam with 53.9 and Nepal with 53. Quiz 정답 발표하겠습니다. What's the answer, Steve? When you go see a movie, you buy a ticket at the blank office. The answer is number one, box office. 네, 1번, box. 맞춰주신 지창곤님, 3712님, 안강미님, 아이디... 첨자 첨자 당첨자 님 <웃음> 정말 당첨되셨고요. 장희수 님까지 다섯 분 뉴욕 타임스 1개월 구독권 보내 드리겠습니다. What is the expression of the day, Steve? Yeah, I mentioned it a little while ago when we were talking about Black Friday sales mm -hmm. and I said you watch the news or you watch the videos of the people yep. and it's like a competition, right? <laughs> And a fierce competition. I referred to it as a free for all, mm. free for all, mm -hmm. or the expression "every man for himself." Mm. Now I realize that's a sexist expression, right? But every it's a, human, maybe. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> every person for themselves, but yeah. that is the English expression that's "every right. man for himself." Mm. And what it means is, well, I'll give you another example: a buffet. Yeah. Right, buffet <laughs> restaurant, amazing buffet, mm -hmm. and there are so many people in the restaurant, right? And you want to get the best chobap or the best uh, lamb gogi or whatever, mm. and you're trying your best to get in there. You don't care about the other people in there. <laughs> That's what every man for himself means. Mm. That's what free for all means. It is a survival game. 네, every man for himself 그러면은 자기 자신만 생각하고 뭔가 를 굉장히 경쟁적으로 가지려고 한다라고 해서 보통 이렇게 뭐 세일을 할때 우리가 그냥 막 덤벼들잖아요. 옆에 누가 있든 나의 체면 이런 거는 다 내려놓고 그냥 달려가서 하는 그런 행동을 every man for himself라고 할수 있습니다. Yeah, so big shopping days, big events like that, that's where you'll often hear those expressions. Mm, all right, perfect. By the way, I'm sorry, I couldn't get the picture of my Christmas tree up today. We had a technical thing. Oh, I see. I'll show you tomorrow. Perfect. Because I'm excited too, that's why. <laughs> And I want to inspire people to put up their own trees. Yeah. <laughs> Um, 4757 님이요. 엄마랑 다낭 여행 다녀왔다가 오늘 처음 출근하는데요. 너무 추워요. I've just no. come back from Danang, Vietnam. Oh. And it's too cold here in Korea. I thought you were going to say it's really cold in Vietnam. No, no, no. 모두 감기 안 걸리게 따뜻하게 입고 출근하세요 하셨습니다. How nice. A trip to Danang. But coming back from your vacation, <laughs> that can be a bit of a bummer. That's the hardest <laughs> part about traveling to a tropical location in the wintertime. Yeah. Being there, amazing. Mm. Coming back, awful. Absolutely <laughs> awful. <laughs> 그렇습니다. Mm. 어, 그래도 추억 떠올리시면서 사진 보시면서 오늘도 화이팅 하셨으면 좋겠습니다. 사칠 로칠님. All right. Well, Steve, have a warm day if you can. Thank you very much for having me. Enjoy your December 2nd and I'll see you tomorrow. All right. We're going to go on to hour two now. And coming up in the second hour of morning special, we have the Power English team with a daily idiom. That's a staple in English. And we call that Say What? We also have our book segment with Paul Matthews, who is back from China. We'll talk to him about that and much more. First, though, a song by Linda Ronstadt. 
It's so easy.